Okay, the first thing to do, the first thing to do is to basically replace the spark plugs. And now these spark plugs are five eighths of an inch. You need a deep socket like this one. Deep socket has no blockages at the until the right until the end. Remember, the short socket will have a blockage about halfway through, so your spark plugs won't work. Um, so two spark plugs. I have a basically a torque wrench, and the spark plugs should go on with no more than 20 foot pounds of torque. Uh, unfortunately, this Mercury, which has not been serviced so far, the torque is about 40 foot pounds from the factory, so the factory is kind of not following their own specifications. So anyway, here we go, and you can watch it. And it's way past 20 from the factory. And once you cracked the little friction that's there, you can pull it out and then just put it by hand. So you can see it's pretty tight. Back on there. In there, basically, just unscrew by hand. Since all the oil is gone from the motor, I don't need to wear gloves until I put the other oil in. Motor's pretty clean anyway, right now. So. And you can see lots of carbon deposits on the end. And Mercury recommends you check the spark plug gap, which is this gap here. Um, I wouldn't bother, I'd just replace the spark plugs every year and be done with it. They're pretty cheap anyway, so we'll spend about 90 bucks total on you know, spark plugs and everything else, fuel pump, all the liquids, etc. It gets cheaper every year because you buy one liter of liquids and you only use about 200 ml. So it's pretty cheap overall. Just basically replace them. Don't bother about the gap. Slide it in. Wait for the second one. That's the second one. Again, it's pretty bad. It looks pretty bad, beat up, so let's get rid of it. So there you have it. Spark plugs are done. Next is the fuel line filter, which is the one I showed you earlier, which is this one. This is held by two clips, which need to be basically flattened with a plier, and then we can remove the fuel line filter. So here's how we do the fuel filter. Now that we've got the spark plugs out of the way, let's see my empty spark plug sockets, one and two down there. There's a fuel line filter. What we do is we take a flat one. Don't use anything pokey because this is the fuel line, so it's kind of bad to poke it holes in it. Yeah. Clamp on these two things, gently slide it back. That's all you need to do. Clamp on this end. Gently slide it back, and basically, once it's loose, rubber holes will pop out. 
I need to... Let's play work on it a little bit. Okay, so I pop those two off now. What I'm going to do is wiggle this hose back and forth. And you can see the fuel line filter is kind of coming out slowly. Basically, just keep wiggling it back and forth. Make sure you don't puncture the hose because it is gasoline, so you don't want it to spray all about the engine, which is hot and cause a fire. So, wiggle it back and forth. Notice that I, at the beginning, I did burn off all the excess gas in the carb. Otherwise, gas would be spraying all over the place right now, which is the float bolt. So, it would spray all over the place, which is not a good idea. So, you can see it's come out. And just clamp on the rest. A bit of tugging back and forth. And a little bit of gasoline splash, which is bad. And it should be cleaned off. Uh, make sure the gasoline evaporates before you start the engine again. All bad things will happen. So, old filter, which is kind of brownish and bad. And the new filter, which is pure white and good. I'll just reverse the process to do the new filter on. So I put the new filter on, it's basically just slide it on with your fingers, no problem here. Pliers and thing. Oops, there you go. Uh, squeeze, gently slide it on. Hard to do things one handed, but here we go. There we go. Little more in. Once it's touching, let it go. That's nice and tight. Next one. Squeeze and slide, snap, squeeze, slide, and let go. And that's nice and snug, move the armoring back into place. Nice and snug, no leaking. Pull it to make sure it's tight. Looks good. Let's keep it on top of it. Push it at the bottom so it doesn't get affected. Filter is all done. Take this one again for your brand new spark plugs. I'm not going to bother replacing the old ones or measuring them out because I don't care. Might as well just put new ones on there. Remove the boots, obviously. Don't touch the ends so you won't contaminate them. 
light them on. The spot plug goes slides in onto the nut. So that's how it should be. I flip the plastic boot off without touching the end. That's my business end of my spot plug. That's my boot gone. Now that's my clean business end. Which gets slid into here like so. Slide it in, hand tighten it until it fixes, and then you put it at 20 psi. You don't want to over tighten a spark plug beyond 20 psi, 20 foot pounds. Sorry, um, well, slide it in, business end out. Shows nice and snug. Same thing with the other one. There you go. Slides in. Plastic boot off. Don't touch the end. Goes in there. And slide up so you can see it's going in nicely. Actually, snug against the engine walls. That's my gauge, zero foot pounds. I'm now going to go 20. Put the business end back on the gauge. Slide it in. That's about 18, which is good enough. It's 17 to 20 is the real measurement, so 18 is good enough, I think. Same thing with the lower one. 